is Tiffany from Dream Center Las Vegas. I'm gonna be teaching you guys today in Kids Church. Welcome, welcome. And go ahead and grab your Bible, okay? Because we're gonna be reading out of the Bible, out of the book Exodus, okay? Because we're learning about the Ten Commandments today. I know you guys have been learning about it already, but we're gonna go over the scriptures and read a little story about it, okay? So go ahead and pull that out. I'll wait for you. All right, you got it? Okay, cool. So we're gonna be reading out of Exodus 19, verses 16 through 25, and Exodus 20, verses one through 21. So let's start in Exodus 19, all right? Cool. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Boop, boop, boop. Everyone in the camp trembled. When Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God, they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like a furnace and the whole mountain trembled violently. Can you imagine that? I would be scared too. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up and the Lord said to him, go down and warn the people so they do not force their way up to see the Lord and many of them will perish. Even the priest who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us. Put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy. The Lord replied, go down and bring Aaron up with you. But the priests and the people must not force their way um, to come up to the Lord or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Because you've got to remember, they just left uh, Egypt after the plagues and they were set free. So now they're in, uh, they crossed the the Red Sea, and now they're in the wilderness, okay? So now they are listening to God for the, the commandments. You shall not have any other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day, is the Sabbath to the Lord. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that means kids, listen to your parents, so that you may live long in the land of your Lord, in the land the Lord is giving you. So let me read that over. <laughs> Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, so that means don't lie. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant or his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 
When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in, the, in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you and keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. And that was how God spoke to the Hebrews 3,500 years ago. That was so long ago, huh? Why were the people scared of God's voice? Why do you think? Because it was surrounded by lightning, thunder, and smoke. They were scared. They were afraid. Why did God speak to them in such a scary manner? Because God was aware of how their hearts were and that they would not listen to him otherwise. There are many instances in the Bible where God has spoken. They weren't always scary. Jesus told the people on behalf of God, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. That's in Matthew eleven twenty eight. God is like a great dad. He can be soft and kind when we need him to be. He can be very loud, like he was being with the Hebrews, when they're not listening to them. Has your dad ever gotten on to you for not doing something? <laughs> I know mine has. We know that gravity makes heavy items and light items hit the ground at the same time. It's a little like God's voice. God has spoken loudly at times in the history of the world. Generally with us, he talks softly. Just like loud and quiet objects behave in the same way, God is the same whether he's loud or quiet. The hint of his voice or of his presence in our lives should make us listen to what he has to say. Jesus said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. Sometimes God is loud. Sometimes he is quiet. But he is always God. If we learn to listen when we pray, we will be able to follow the Ten Commandments better. And hopefully will stay out of trouble that the nation of Israel got into because they were scared of God. I know I don't want to be in trouble, and I know that God loves me even though I get in trouble sometimes. And the same with you. Sometimes if you get in trouble, God still loves you. You just have to know how to pray. Have a great day, guys. And there are some coloring sheets and activities that are going to be posted along with this message. So ask your parent to print those for you and have a great Sunday. Jesus loves you and so do we. Have a great one. Bye guys.